Good morning, everybody. Mama Southern and Blessed here. So, I just wanted to um, come and just make this quick video because I have some stuff on my mind. So, I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet. Yesterday, I, um, I started out on a new business venture. Um, and um, it was just take a chance. I like, I love to cook. Um, it's something that I enjoy to do. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm a little congested. I don't know. Hopefully, I'm not catching a cold. But <coughs> So, excuse me if my voice is a little raspy. But I started on out, out on a new vi business venture. And um, it was selling platters because I love to cook. So, um... You know, it took a lot for me to do it because when it comes down to cooking, I mean, I already do hair. I already have my own business with doing hair. But when it comes down to cooking, you know, it's challenging because everybody's taste buds is not the same and everybody doesn't cook the same way and different things like that. So, you know, to me, that can be kind of like a scary venture because, you know, <clears throat> You're going to get criticism from people. Then you're going to have people who love your food and different things like that, you know. But I look at, you know, things in life. And if you don't take chances, you know, then you'll never, you know, the road to success is not always where everything is perfect. Oh, I got to get the right, the perfect materials and this, that, and the third. You have to start from somewhere. Those who think that you have to start, you start from the top to get to the top. It's, it's a backwards mindset. People think if they have the perfect utensils, the perfect this, the perfect that, that their food is going to come out great. If they do things just so and things. Yes, you take pride in what you do. But when it honestly comes from the heart and you humble yourself, God will bless it. I look at those who have the perfect utensils, have the perfect pot, have the perfect this, have the perfect that. And honestly, their food is not good. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you go to restaurants and they have the perfect setup. You ever been someplace and they have the perfect setup? The, it's the nicest, even a food chain. And you go and eat their food and their food is disgusting. Well, you know, it's all about humbling yourself and knowing what God called you to. You know what I'm saying? And everybody, how can I say, everybody can't be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? You have to have people around you that... I have a positive mindset, a humble mindset, and understand God's calling on your life and even on their own life. You know, I look at, like, when you go to other countries and you go to different places and the way they cook and what they use to cook and how humble they are, but they know they can get it done. And they food be slamming. When I went to Jamaica, like, certain things that they were cooking their food on and just, like, the street food and stuff like that, like, yo... They make do. And when you make do, I realize when you make do, God blesses it. You know what I mean? I also just wanted to talk about, you know, those who are scared to branch out. You go to your job. You're miserable. You're not happy. You're working for people who really don't care about you and yours. Um, <clears throat> you're working for people that really don't care about you and yours. You know, they're not paying you that much and you feel like you're a slave. You know, in all actuality, that's what it is. Because there's no way you should spend 40 hours a week someplace out of your life every day and you're not making it. And when I say you're not making it, you're miserable, you're not living life, you're just controlled. You're a controlled slave. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people... I look around and I see a lot of people who are judgmental of people like me who branch out and do our own thing. Well, you know, most of the time, the reason why they hate or they, you know, look down on people like us that, you know, recognize our gifts and who we are is because of the simple fact of fear. You know what I'm saying? And you can't get mad at the person for hating on you or not believing in your craft because really what you need to do is pray for them because they have fear. They're scared to branch out. When you, usually when people branch out and do their own things, a lot of time it takes faith because you have, have to have to have faith to know that if God called you to this thing, he's going to bless it. 
You understand what I'm saying? He's gonna. He, you have to believe. You have to trust that he's gonna send the right clientele. He's gonna send the exact people that he wants you to come. And a lot of times it's living and learning because you're gonna have people that doesn't appreciate your gift. You understand what I'm saying? You're gonna have people that talk down on your gift. You know the enemy has to send. You know, he can't let things go smoothly, especially when God is involved. He's going to send people, you understand what I'm saying, that try to sabotage. It's going to be people that, you know, try to come up against you or whatever. But you have to learn to break through from that because if you're the type of person that when somebody says one thing bad or something like that and you give up, then that that shows that, you know, you don't have faith. You know, I don't want to call somebody weak. I don't want to call people weak because everybody has their weaknesses. That doesn't necessarily mean they're a weak person but what it means is that their faith that they can push through their faith that this is what God called them to then they'll hold on to that because there's always going to be doubts there's always going to be those things that try to keep in to steal the will of God out of your life and that's what's most important you know what I mean being in the will of God a lot of people don't understand that it is not you know the world's way it's God's way we're in this world but we're not of it the world says work 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 Jump into the rat race. You got to get this to get this. Well, here's my idea about it. And many might not understand, but there's a whole bunch of people that do understand. And those are the people that are enjoying life and living life abundantly. When you work and watch other people and then you get depressed because you're not getting where they at, you don't know other people's struggle. You understand what I'm saying? If we are upset and we're stressed out because we're working this one job or we're doing this and it's stressing us out, then you don't know if that other person is working three, four, five, six jobs. You understand? You see they big house you see that car but you don't know their friends you don't know their family you don't know what's being sacrificed you don't need to know the people that's being neglected that's why in the ten commandments in the bible we were told in the beginning not to covet other people's lives you uh, you covet other people's lives then you're gonna miss out on the blessings that god has given you and god pays close attention to those who fault find murmur and complain if you can't be happy with what god has blessed you with why should he bless you with more when you're always watching watching other people's blessings like at the end of the day you have to be the type of person to say i don't care what any god is doing with anybody else i want my faith and not my sight this is what god has told me he's blessed you with two working arms two working legs you have 24 hours in a day what you two choose to do in that 24 hours is on you you understand? But God has given you 24 hours in a day to decide who and what you're going to be. Because not only that, you don't decide that on your own. It takes this ermit and a personal relationship with God for him to guide you. And I have fell off for a while because I got comfortable and I got lazy. A lot of us get lazy and we get passive in our relationship and the time that we spend with God. And you have to understand that's most important because God created you. He created you and he knows why he put you here on the earth. He also also know, he also knows that when he put you here on this earth, he put you here with certain gifts. And those are the gifts that will take you God knows where. You, A lot of people go to work every day, come home miserable, sitting, wishing, hoping, praying that they got a good degree. Hoping and wishing, praying that they did this and they did that. But you don't understand. You, If you live under the grace of God, you are under unmerited favor. I have no degree i have a high school diploma i don't even use it i don't work outside of my home now don't get me wrong i'm not saying that school is a bad thing because it is for whoever it is for but i'm not chasing the next man's dream i'm chasing i'm not even chasing a dream i'm chasing after god and he places the dream unto me you understand we have to teach our children the same way but you know what children they they, they hear you as they grow up they hear you but nothing is more valuable than experience and wisdom. And one thing I can say that I'm blessed with is the fact that I learned young. I learned wisdom young. I learned a lot of things young. Don't get me wrong. We are forever learning until we leave this earth. But what I'm saying is there is a lot that God instilled in me when I was young because he knew what he was taking me to. And it's a difference. When you take heed to the word of God, when you when you spend time with God, when you learn him from young, the Bible says my sheep know 
my voice and the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. Well, you know God's voice if you spend enough time with him. You can't hear God. You'll be miserable if you're spending all day on social media or surfing the internet or doing this and doing that and you're not taking out time with God. It's not just a, oh Lord, do, 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 pray. I pray today and I'm going about my business. You can listen to the Bible. You can read the Bible. If you don't have a revelation or if you don't have discernment, you, it's just, it's, it's, it's null and void. I'm sorry. That's just what it is. I know this and I know this from experience. Okay. It is the word of God. I'm not just saying, believe what I say. What I'm saying is you can hear what I'm saying, but you will have this urban if you have already spent time with God. And this is what he's told you. Let's go into when you go to church, when you go to church, the preacher could be preaching at you, or he could be speaking something into your spirit that your spirit identifies with that is familiar to your spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? You can't just take my word from it. I might be a messenger. I might be a messenger from God. But how would you know if it's the voice of God speaking through his messenger if you don't spend private time with God? This thing has to have, it has to give you a a, 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 a unction in your spirit to make you say, oh, you know what? That's God because I heard that. And he watches over his word to perform it and he also confirms it. And this is what we have to understand. God is not a man that he should lie. A lot of times he asks us to branch out in things that will make us uncomfortable. Oh, God, you want me to do that? I'm scared. I don't know how people will take it. I don't know if I... Listen, people... Listen, people is going to talk about you whether you're doing good or bad. You're, don't cast away your confidence in Jesus Christ. Don't cast away your confidence in God because... You keep your confidence in God. He will always have your back, your sides, and your front. He watches over you no matter what. You understand? You don't have to be perfect and have things just so. When you see a person that's always trying to make sure things is perfect and the outer man is so cleaned up, you know they're a mess inside because they're scared to go around and look a certain way or whatever because they don't love themselves the way they are. So they want people to just love their outer man. But when they open their mouth and start talking, you see what type of spirit they have. All of us have that. All of us have that. When we open our mouth, you hear the spirit that's in the person. Some people won't get in front of a camera unless their makeup is on and their hair is done. Listen, I am a spirit. I am more spirit than I am flesh. When we leave this body, we are spirit. This thing will go back to the dust. Why are people so worried about their bodies? They're altering their faces. They're getting tummy tucks. They're putting uh, 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 fat in their butts. At the end of the day, no. Do I feel, do I like my flab? No, because sometimes it gets in the way of when I close my pants. Do I need to exercise more? Yes. But guess what? That doesn't make me less lovable to God. God loves me the way I am. We spend so much time trying to prove ourselves to people and trying to, and trying to make people accept us that we lose sight of our, of who created us and what he created us to be and God will send the right people in our life to love us for who we are meaning that you have children if God bless you with children and they love you unconditionally in spite of all your flaws you have to look at that as a blessing a lot of men they go out here and they look for multiple women to satisfy uh, what one woman can't get them a lot of women go out here and look for men to satisfy what one man can't get them when God has it all he can give it to you a lot of people wonder and think, you know, how do people stay with one man and one woman? Because at the end of the day, you stay with that person. Yes, you love them. But at the end, you, if you have a relationship with God, he will fulfill every void. But as long as you're going out here and you're going to fulfill yourself with different people, different human beings, you are keep pulling yourself farther and farther away from God. And you know what? You're causing damage in your relationships. You're causing more damage to yourself. Because after a while, when you do things that are wrong, you become a lowly person person low low in spirit low in everything because the enemy is allowed to come in and cause a conviction he's allowed to come in and make you feel guilty and what do people guilty people do guilty people are the most miserable the most lowly in spirit negative people when you're around people who know that they're living a grimy life or they're doing things that they're not supposed to they're the most miserable they're the most miserable and not only that they are self-absorbed they're self-absorbed and not even that they're um 
how can I say it? They're self-medicating. They're self-absorbed. You know, it's just so much. And, you know, you have to have discernment and understand what's going on in people's lives. That's the only way I'm able to say, you know what, Lord, let me push back from people or let me just, you know, try not to put it. Because when you get around people who are miserable, there's something the enemy uses trying to make it feel like it's you. You got to do things perfect. You can't please everybody. The only person you need to worry about is God and what he thinks about you and what he feels about you. And if you have a personal relationship with God, you know when you're doing something wrong. You know because you know what? You allow his Holy Spirit to convict you. You allow the Holy Spirit to convict you. When you get that conviction, if you love God enough, you'll do a 360 year turn. And don't be get me wrong. Sometimes we fall. Sometimes we, you know, we get mad and we get angry and upset when we're supposed to keep our peace and, 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 and not do that. But you know, um, God has a way of turning things in such a way that he will not, not allow those things to tear you down. But without God, you are an empty vessel. You're a person walking on this earth trying to please man, using your job as something to, to stroke your ego, using your house as something to stroke your ego, your car, and the way you look. And all you have when you rip a person of that stuff is an empty vessel and that's why there's so many empty zombies around here people are zombies now because they have no soul all they're looking for is a man or a woman to please them and make them feel good and tickle your fancy but what do you have when those feelings are gone because at the end of the day it's not about feeling you have to have faith in a situation you have to make choices you choose the love you choose to love. That's why there's so many divorces and so many broken relationships because people have not made the choice to love. They just want something that makes them feel good. That's why men have sex with multiple women because they just want something to make them feel good. And when they can't get to that person, then it goes on to the next. When they can't go to that, same thing with women, on to the next. I don't want superficial relationships. I don't want to deal with people that only want to you know, feel good relationships suck. Oh, because you made me feel good this day that I'm going to treat you right. Or because uh, we, we had good sex this day, I'm going to treat you nice. You know, it's, it's a selfish world we're living in. I didn't mean to get off topic, but, you know, I feel like that, that was in my spirit and I have to speak what's on my spirit. But uh, I, I'm sorry, guys. I know my videos are long a lot of the times, but, you know. If you have time to listen, great. If not, then, you know, irregardless, you still have a blessed day.